everybody. Welcome to, uh, I'm going to call this a shebang episode of The Grid there because uh, Peter's on The Grid. Um, but yeah, Scott's out because Scott's in Milwaukee right now. He's doing a seminar, a uh, Lightroom seminar. So this show is all about uh, headshots. So it's a AMA episode of The Grid. So anybody out there can ask Peter anything, right? Sure. Ask me anything. Sure. Okay. We'll fire away. So I learned what AMA was the other day. I didn't even know. I thought it was an award show. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was a war show, and then and then uh, Rachel told me, no, it means ask me anything, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, so yeah. Now now I get it. Now I get it when I see this AMA everywhere. That's so, it. Uh, but yeah, so you're you've been busy though. You have been. I've seen you all over the place. But you just had that uh, headshot mania. You what was that all about? It was awesome. Oh, I. I so the headshot crew is my is my group. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's where my I do all my coaching. And I wanted to get all these people together from all over the world and all mm -hmm. over the country and try and figure out something to do with them. And um, we did two years, about a, a year and a half ago, we did, went on a cruise, oh, yeah. which was cool. We had That's fun, cool. and, but it was yeah. a boat and we were jammed yeah. in this little, they gave us that, the have little been, conference have you seen centers, the conference yeah. room on Yeah, I've been on cruises. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, it's like we were jammed in this tiny room and it was great and we had, we had a good group, but I always wanted to do the next version of that, which was a bigger conference so we had about 150 people cool. out at uh morongo resort and casino and we had an awesome time i had 12 instructors including myself and they did a great job and they're all mentors inside my headshot crew and they came up through the system and they're all kicking butt so i'm really proud of them that's awesome um and and the the people that came we just it was just an awesome time. So I'm going to attempt to do Headshot Mania 2. Yeah. We'll see. And that, that's what I do love about what you're doing is building up and building up that community because that's one of the things we're big at uh, yeah. on, at Kelby One, yeah. you know, in our community and growing that, you know, membership. So other people are, help, people are helping people lift them up, get better. And that's one of the things that, like, with an event like that, that's really cool to see people come together. We actually got an email yesterday. You don't know this, but we got an email into our uh, customer support, thanking us for sponsoring your headshot no mania, way. and really? just saying that this was the that it was so cool, it was the no best way. event. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So that was pretty cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I always but appreciate that. The you're support. actually going to be also doing something, or you're going to be at another event. You're going to be at this place called uh, Photoshop World, right? I am. Yeah, I've heard about this conference. It's really cool. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I, and I've never been to one in Orlando. Oh no. No. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm fun. excited. Oh, it's really fun this year, too, because, like, your walk is nothing. You know, like, yeah. usually, like, if we're in the Mandalay Bay uh, in Vegas, like, the walk is forever. Yeah. Uh, and you don't feel like, you feel like you're in a different world. And then last year, we had to walk through the Hyatt to get over to the convention center. This uh -huh. time, we're actually in the Hyatt, and it's, like, a brand new convention center. Oh, that's cool. So it's, cool. like, you know, really high ceilings. Everything's high tech. It's really nice. And then, like, that's where all the instructors stay is right there at the Hyatt. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's... um. It's I'm really cool. Now, what are you teaching right. at Photoshop World? I'm going to do a couple courses, I think. I've got uh, two on the plate. One is uh, my top 10 tips for headshot photography. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the other one is my top 10 blunders. Oh, so, so you're like... Yang and yang. I wonder huh? which one which one's on the schedule first. Like you gotta go to both people. Yeah, you yeah, gotta right? go to both. But the blunders are really the thing that that if people just nip these things you know and stop doing these little things oh, they can yeah. really take their business to another level and the tips are obviously important well isn't but. that true though like uh you know the one thing that you know i always like when uh, you know helping people or teaching people and stuff it's like we've been through it like if you've been through it learn from other it's great to learn from other people's mistakes you know oh, like yeah. you know because oh, yeah. we all are gonna fail we're all gonna yeah, you know yeah, yeah. screw up we're all gonna do yeah. that stuff but not everybody you know like like with you you've been through that so you're like Hey, this is where I screwed up. Like that's valuable information. It's huge. I'm yeah. jump, jumping people I mean, over those I think those that class obstacles. is more important than the other class. Yeah, right. It's like yeah. here, here's how not to screw up. Yeah, right. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's cool that you're doing that. That's really cool. You, um, I yeah. never remember the the like the good shoots. Yeah. Like you, you you might remember, but the ones that are tough, the toughest ones, those are the ones, the ones that give you the most adversity, those are the ones yeah. you grow from and you learn from. Yeah. And, um, the ones that are most memorable. So it looks like we got a bunch of comments coming, and we got uh, Suzanne. Brian, Brian's out there, cool. Yeah, so right. Suzanne's in there saying Suzanne. Headshot Mania was amazing. Yes, yeah, Suzanne so. and Brian were both there. Um, and then Bernardo's there from Madrid, amazing. Spain. Cool. And then we Ian Monroe, who you just saw his work over in the gallery. 
Oh, he's was in that there. Ian? Yeah, that, Ian, Ian, that stuff's saying, amazing. Yeah. I loved so, it. Yeah, and Peter oh. was like, he was like, "How'd you get that that sharp?" You know, you're like looking yeah, the at prints it, going, "Look, unbelievable." Oh, Ian, your crazy. work rocks. Good yeah. job, man. Very cool. And then look at we got cool um, stuff. Like, who else? We got G.W. Clark from Utah. We got Avian from Columbus. We got Blue Tie from Denver. Uh, we got Alvin uh, Allen from Albuquerque. So we're all over the place here. So uh, if you have any questions for Peter, ask anything, me anything, anything, ask me. So, anything. Um, but just to wrap up Photoshop World, uh, the early bird discounts coming up the end of next month, so April 27th. So that's the best time to get in because you're gonna get the best price. And um, uh, Kelby One members, Kelby One Pro members, can even get another hundred dollars off. Oh really? So, yeah, that's amazing, yeah. guys. Get so, in on that so I get to see you. And that's where you want to stay at that Hyatt. If you go to the travel section up there on the uh, website, uh, that Hyatt, that's where everybody's staying. So that's where the instructors stay, that's where the staff stays, that's where everybody stays. You know, that's where all the parties happen. You know, you want to be in the The partying is and, the important and, part. In that yeah. stuff, yeah, that's where to stay, so. That's it. I yeah, gotta... so uh, we're gonna get on to it, but before we do that, uh, we do have some contest prizes. So we got contests that we're gonna be giving away some stuff. We're giving away a really cool book, right? Oh my yeah. gosh, are we giving you know this about thing this? away? This book is amazing. So this, this book, book the, I had uh, something to do with that book. The headshot. So this is uh, basically like the Bible of headshots. It's headshot photography. So if you want to know everything about headshots, here you go. So, um, and where can they, they can get this on Amazon. They can get it on the Amazon. They can also, um, I, I do it if they sign up for my coaching program, uh -huh. I give them a signed book. Oh, cool. So you get a free So that's uh, on the Headshot book. Crew? On Headshot Crew. Yeah. If you go to headshotcrew.com and you sign up, I will, uh, and you do the book deal, you can get a free book and I'll send it to you anywhere in the world. Cool. So that's what we were doing awesome. with them. And they've been, you know, the thing is this, this, this wouldn't have happened without Scott, like, like approach me on this and to have I sat for those of you that don't know this only this happened because I'm I'm ter I'm a terrible I'm not a writer I'm not I never felt like I was a writer and this is actually if you read this it sounds like I'm talking to you because I was like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna like worry like Cindy and I and the editors and stuff I said do not edit this like <laughs> in a, like make it sound like my voice like i'm right. talking like say stuff that's like if i say shebang and, and use that yeah, you use know that headshot's word. not yeah. really a word either but we're making it one yeah um so if you read it it sounds like i'm i'm speaking to you but um the reason is is because i said scott i'm not a, i can't i can't write anything i'm not right. i was never good in school right, right. I was, he's like don't worry about it i'm gonna sit down with you we're gonna put a uh, we put an iPhone Recorder, in between us, yeah. and we're going to record yeah. our conversation, and then we're going to transcribe it, and that's going to be the book. And I was like, Scott, you're going to sit down with me. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> to record this book. Guys, Scott, I flew down here, I don't know how many times. Yeah, it was a while. It was and a couple times. I came times. down a bunch, and Scott and I put a recorder in between us and, mm -hmm. and pressed play, and we just talked this thing out. And then, he's, and then Scott said, okay, I'm going to send you the transcription. And I got the transcription and I started to read. He goes, just tweak it a little bit. Don't change much. And I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't sound like me. I got to I gotta use that transcription as a backbone to rewrite the entire book. So I rewrote the entire, this was the hardest thing. I've trained for two Olympic games. I think doing this was harder for me. <laughs> wow. This was very difficult yeah. and it means a lot to me. And a lot of people are getting a, a ton out of it. It's just great well, to have that's a, the thing. a book A lot of people are getting a ton out of it. There. So all the feedback we ever get on this, like it's the Bible of headshots. Yeah. 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 So that's very cool. Now we also are giving away something else that's really cool. And that's the uh, Platypod Max and the Platypod Ultra. So I use these all the time. You, you hadn't seen these before, I, right? No, yeah. I hadn't seen them So before. these things are awesome because you yep. can strap it to anything. You can nail it to anything. You can... Um, you can even use these pins to like put it on a, an uneven surface and uh -huh. then you put your camera down and then you got a surface. So if I was taking headshots with it, I could just- Yep, just you could do right that. There. You could, just you could strap it, you know. Just strap put, it right to myself. Yeah. There we yeah, go. You that could. That's cool, look at that. Thing. But you know what's it's really good for nowadays is where the tripod police. So, you know, you go out places and they go, you can't have a tripod. It, I can always get by with putting that down on the ground and nobody ever says anything. Really? Yeah, but if, you know, those places where they yeah. go, you can't have a tripod, they don't know what to put, do. They don't know what that, they don't know that's what to not do. a when tripod. You, when what you put mean? that on the ground like that, they're kind of like, I don't so know what that is. It looks like a tripod to me. Yeah, so they just walk around it. So well, there you go. So that's how you get by. Look at that, guys. 
There so you go. it does look like we have a, a couple questions coming in. Uh, so Johan's asking you, um, question for Peter in headshots, how many and what kind of diffusers are recommended? Uh, if you don't own a Peter Hurley kit, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so I, I shoot continuous lighting most of the time. We're actually working on a, um, we're doing a new class. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, yeah. we're going to film a new class down here. And um, I, in that class, I'm going to be talking about the different lighting setups that, I, that I've used over the years. So we're going to start with natural light, then we're going to go into speed lights, and then we're going to go into the flex kit, so continuous lighting. Um, but I recommend that you, it's more importantly that you have really nice soft light. I like soft light, so if you have to diffuse it, get it diffused, but build up a system that works for you. Like it's most important to have a kit where your work looks good and, you know, go from there. If you can create consistency so the next client coming in, you have a consistent look and you can create that and the look is, is good, then you go from there. But just answering like which diffuser uh, really depends upon your, your gear that you're, what you're shooting through the diffuser. So, you mm, know, okay. that's really important. Yeah. I think um, most of it is based on consistency. Again, we coach on all this stuff on the Headshot Crew because I get to see the pictures. I have to see the picture and then see and then get the lighting and, described. And why and then is that consistency important? A client needs to latch on to something. Yeah. Like right. if you have an inconsistent portfolio, I'm going to talk about this a lot in the class too. If you have an inconsistent portfolio and I'm going to you and I look at your yep. website, I don't know what I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you're capable of really doing. It might all be good work, but it might be yeah. really haphazard. I created this look um, that obviously works for, for my work, and I've do, been doing it for 18 years yeah. now, that, um, that is consistent. It, people know when they come in, they have a sense of what they, they, they don't know exactly what they'll look like within that look, but they know what they're going to be getting, and that's what you have to sell to your customer. I mean, and it was really, that something when you started out, you kind of figured out that you didn't have that consistent look, and then you pulled it together, or did you already start off with a consistent I, look? I went straight after it. And okay. you know what the thing is, is that in New York, when I started shooting headshots, it was all actors. Now it's all like uh, actors and business and whoever, everybody yeah, everybody, has headshot. Who, everybody, yeah. it's the social media, right? It's huge, yeah. yeah. So um, I would have these agents call me and be like, okay, we're gonna send you some people, but we want you to shoot them. We love this look that's outside with this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I shoot a white background. Yeah. I believe that that's actors, I, do. I, don't, I don't want actors to have another character in the scene, which would be the background, would be another character competing uh, against point. them. That's the way I felt about it. So I always, so I created that and then I turned work away, which was like, to this day, I was like, <laughs> was I nuts? What was I thinking? I mean, really, I was like, yeah. I thought I was crazy. And people say, did you really turn work? I said, I did. And it, for some reason it worked. I got this cachet, yeah. like I was this guy that does this and you have to go to him. And then, boom, they well, just Well, you had a product in. that differentiated, differentiated yourself from the rest of them. You all right? Uh, yeah. So we got a couple other questions. There's an important question here from Norman's Peter. Norman's in here. Uh, attending Photoshop or attending the Volvo Ocean Race, which would you choose? Oh, my gosh. Photoshop world, for sure. There you go. I do not like going out in a, in a vessel <laughs> on the high seas overnight. I go out, I race little boats around, <laughs> and then I come back in. So I'm going to sail in St. Pete. This, that's why I'm down here. I'm, I got a regatta. Um, we're getting some, some stuff done while I'm racing. But I just go out and I come back in. That's it. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Well, that kind of answers the next question. North yeah. of 49th says, uh, uh, Peter, are you still competitive sailing? So, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you're on. actually competing this weekend in yeah. Uh, Tampa. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So cool. St. Pete Yacht Club. And I competed last. I was in Santa Barbara last weekend. Yeah, you're all over the place yeah. doing so, that and doing yeah. headshots. Yeah, <laughs> doing them. Yeah. So uh, Carl's asking a uh, question for Peter. Uh, what's your oh, favorite Preet's lens for headshot? Sorry, I'm like excited to see these names. Norman's watching, Preet's watching. Hey, Preet. Look at um, that. Love from Dubai. Yeah, Dubai. no, he's yeah. awesome. He took my class in Dubai and we hung out a bunch. He's, he's so cool. Um, Norman is in the, in the headshot crew and he's saying cool. headshot crew rules. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I, well, my favorite lens, um, mm -hmm. is I, I actually in the studio, I keep, I have two lenses that I use. I have one lens I take when I travel, but my favorite lens for headshots is the, uh, I shoot Canon. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the 70 to 200 F4. 
Okay. Because the F4, I like the F4 because I'm in the studio. I don't really need to go to 2.8. I'm shooting right. my lighting, my light kit from Westcott is mm -hmm. bright as can be. You can't imagine. So I don't need the extra stop. And the difference, I don't know if you've seen the F4 lens compared mm -hmm. to the 2.8. Yeah. It's just, it's it's a much beefier lens, the 2.8. Yeah. And I like being lean. So I like yeah. the F4. And I also like the ability to put, the, I usually shoot around 92 millimeters. But um, I will zoom in and out a little bit. So I, that's why I like the zoom. I mean, I, did, you know, I shot prime lenses forever. And I'm just getting laser in my old age. Yeah. So. And when I travel, I go with the 24 to 105 because I got more range and what I can right. do with it. You know, I don't have to, I'm not always shooting just headshots. Right. So then I only have to bring one lens with me. And again, I'm lazy. I carry, I carry my think tank <laughs> I'm bag and I I'm carry less. That's when I'm traveling. You know? I do the same thing. Um, so Larry so. Becker is saying, uh, Eric, show Peter the spike feet. So what he's talking about is on the platypod. Yeah, you showed I think me that. We showed you that. showed but me yeah, that. Yeah, you just drill in these spike feet, and then it, it levels and, itself. And you can you know? put it however they yeah, want. Yeah, so that's amazing. really cool. I thought he was um, talking about your feet or Yeah, something. right? <laughs> so Brandon uh, Heiss is, asked, is saying, if you're not shooting headshots, you're missing out. So um, that's one of the things you're doing in your class, right? You're talking about, like, if you haven't started in headshots, like how to start in headshots, Exactly. Right? I think yeah. a lot of people are afraid of, of the challenge of photographing individuals, mm -hmm. like people. It's just yeah. not like you. You don't yeah. shoot people. No, um, that's why we right? were talking about it before. Yeah. I'm like, uh, it's just not my thing. Yeah. yeah. No, and it's I don't not, know why. It's not easy. Now, I can shoot my family. I can yeah. shoot my daughter. No problem. But yeah, yeah other people, yeah, just yeah. not easy. Other people, yeah. you have this, uh, I think as the photographer, we have this... Uh, it's just a little hard because you want to produce something nice for them, but then you don't, they don't, you know, when you get start. I remember starting out and being like, what, do, what am I going to give this person? Like, what are they right. going to get out of this? Like, I have to mm -hmm. be good. Like, there's so much pressure on the photographer to be good and create something that's that's nice for them. But then the wild card is, is that they they don't know how to behave in front of a camera. And then if you don't know how to, talk to them right you don't want to be in that situation so people are just like give up they're just like i'm not going to photograph a person yeah it's just too much pressure too much pressure so um yeah what i'm doing in the classes i'm just trying to say hey look we're photographers you can give that person a nice picture you can put a little money in your pocket you can all you've got to do is forget about the fear of that and just just use your love for photography and your skill set to do something amazing, which is give them a, an image that that is powerful and meaningful for that person at this time in their lives. So, well, that's so that kind of to follow up, you know, a couple more questions here coming in. Um, Preet is asking, what's your uh, most preferred f-stop and focal length for headshots? So you kind of touched on. I think you were in the uh, focal length. You were saying that you're around hovering around 92 92 millimeters. millimeters. Yeah, I that's very specific. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm on a zoom lens. I put it around 92. Um, I just found that that 85 becomes a little wide for me. 100's a little bit long, so somewhere in between. Yeah. And um, I usually look at the lens and decide. Look at the, you know, the the bokeh of the lens. Like what's mm -hmm. it doing to the uh, depth of field? Like absolutely figuring out my distance from my subject. Mm -hmm. my aperture and then what it actually does so what i like what what most of my work if you look at it the eyes are in focus the ears start to go out of focus mm -hmm. so to create that kind of look on different it will look different depending on the different right. camera lens. systems that you're using mm -hmm. in the lenses so um to create that a similar look to that i'm usually at anywhere from four five five oh or five six depending on the lens and what I'm doing and, and how specific I, I want to be with that. So okay. um, usually if the if the face is, so if I'm like, let's say like this, I'm looking at the camera and this eye is in focus. I always focus on the front eye. This eye should start to get a little bit soft and the, you know, the ears and stuff. I don't like, I, I, I get very distracted very easily. So if you're shooting like the 80, there's an, a, what do they have? A 85, one, four now. And you shoot mm -hmm. it at 1.4 and it gets the front eye in focus and everything just goes crazy out of focus. Mm -hmm. You know, that for headshot photography becomes too distracting for me because it's distracting to see right. that, that the depth of field that shallow for me. Some people like that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's up extreme, to you what, how you right? guys want to do. It's just so extreme. It's you know, that definitely depth a of field. very, 
it's yeah. a it's a look and yeah. i think it could be an artsy look that could work for yeah. portraiture or something but for a commercially viable headshot to do mm -hmm. that it just becomes a little bit too artsy i guess is that the word i don't know yeah well that makes sense i don't know no um so cheeky nando is asking um how far is the space center from the photoshop world hotel um i believe it's 40 maybe 37 minutes so about, probably around 37 minutes i've made that drive a few times so um somewhere around there and i think rose kieran's asking the same thing is She's keen to go to the Space Center while I'm in Orlando. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's happening in place. Like we were talking about uh, earlier, I mean, they're uh, shooting rockets off over there all the time, so it's That's very so happening. Cool. Yeah, like people don't that, hear about it the, a lot, right? You know? It's not that far away. You no, it's not that far. And you, so. you put down your platypus yeah, and, and then you shoot rockets, good. right? <laughs> there you go. Um, I, so who I, else You we know got? what's funny? Len was asking, am I coming to Houston? I mean, I'm going to Houston. I have a race yeah. in Houston. You know what? Houston, I don't, do you guys do workshops? There? I don't know yeah, what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Scott just did a workshop in Houston. Can you guys show my computer ago. and show my yeah. upcoming schedule? I'll show you where I'm going. Well, it's kind of yeah. funny. Um, so I, this is the Headshot Crew website. And this is my, um, this is my coaching stuff. But this is where I do, the, my signature workshop is the headshot intensive. And I also do a third intensified day, which I added. So I also put everywhere that I'm going on here. So I'll be in Shutterfest this coming week. So anybody that's there, hey, come come by and say hi. And finally, mm -hmm. I'll be talking there. Then I've got an intensive in New York, April 14th and 15th, and the intensified on the 16th. Then I'm going to be in Charleston. I've never done a workshop in Charleston. Mm. I'm going down there to sail. So I'm throwing the, the headshot intensive in Charleston. So there's still space in that one you can sign up for. Um, then I'm back in New York in May. And then I am in Houston in June. And this is the thing about Houston. Oof. I put this on the schedule. It's sold out right away. Wow. The intensified only has one spot left. We had a waiting list for the intensive already. So people are already signing up for the second one. So I put a second oh, one. Wow in houston because i'm going to be Very my cool. sailing doesn't start till the following weekend so i'm going to be there for about two weeks and i'll be teaching away so definitely go to this link and check it out cool well um we probably should take a quick break and then when we come back we'll uh we've got about we've got a, a bunch of questions there to answer and then we'll go over some more stuff that uh that you're doing stuff about the class and then cool. um then wrap up the show. Awesome. All right. Hey, Ollie. Hey, Mary. Hey, Will. Good to see right. you guys in here. We'll see you guys in just a few minutes. All right. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. All right. We're back for the Shebang In episode of The Grid. And uh, we're here with Peter. And we're um, asking any question of Peter. So if you guys have any question, just uh, throw it in the chat. Throw it in the Facebook feed, wherever you're at. Just ask Peter. And he, Peter said you can ask him anything. So it's a, yeah, no holds bar. It's, it's all open. So, um, but yeah, you're down here. So you're shooting a class for Kelby One. That's what we're doing tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're actually, uh, we're, we are, this is the first time we are, uh, what did I say? We're filming coast to coast right now because we have a crew out filming um elena blair in seattle uh -huh. so we've got a crew filming out in elena blair and then we got a crew filming back here so we're actually a coast to coast video production there we go right that's now. cool that's yeah cool. so that's, yeah yeah so that's really cool uh so but uh speaking of classes though uh we have um last week melanie kern favilla's uh uh, floral photography class came out and she did she was one of the winners of the gallery as well oh really so That's she won cool. the gallery everybody loved her floral photography she did wanted to know how to do it so she did this class and it's getting like rave reviews no people way. are loving it oh, so they're just cool. loving to see in the technique i've actually seen in the community people posting like hey here's what i did with it here's my flower shots i mean it's really cool yeah. um and uh, we also have this week coming out uh, a Mavic Air drone class. So what? Terry and Scott did a drone class on the Mavic Air. Oh, that's so, awesome. So yeah, we got all People that stuff coming out. Those and those suckers um, all over the place. So, um, and we got tons of classes coming up. I, I, I say in, uh, next month's gonna be crazy. We got uh, Chris Knight has a class. 
Irene Rudnick has a class. Lindsay Adler has a class. Wow. Moose Pearson has a class. So like next month's like slammed, and then the month after yeah. that's gonna have your class in there. Cool. So I mean, we're just gonna be like that's slammed amazing. with with classes, and they're I filming love, those I classes love Chris out there. Knight stuff. Have you seen his work? Yeah, he's, yeah. Amazing. he's amazing. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, so we gotta get. We're getting back to the AMA episode of the Grid here, and uh, asking Peter some questions. So let's see what we got coming in here. So uh, Mike Doran saying, uh, I have the book and it helped improve my portraits. Thank you. Uh, how important was it to your business to establish the headshot crew and how did that come about? Um, I don't think, I mean, the headshot crew was really poor, was not important for my photography business. It was important for my coaching. Okay. Um, I was actually, what, what I was trying to do and the reason why it came about was I was shooting in New York. I was charging a pretty penny for headshots mm -hmm. at the time. Um, and people would call in and I'd tell them my rate and they'd hang up the phone. <laughs> and I'd be like, wait a minute, that person could benefit from that. They need a yeah. headshot, but I can't service them. So I was like, what if I coach a photographer, I bring them in and mm -hmm. I charge a lower price point and they, I give them the job. So that's what I ended up doing. And then what happened was I, so we'd get all these new clients and I, I coached the photographer and they took the work and I got a piece of the action. And I was like, well, if I can do it for one person in New York, why can't I do it? I had a studio in LA. I was like, why don't I do it in LA? And wait, if I can do it in New York and LA, then I opened up in Dallas. I was like, I'll do it in Dallas. And then I was like, wait a minute, now I'm in New York, LA and Dallas. And now what I'm coaching, what if I mm -hmm. need a place where these people that I'm coaching can hang out and learn yeah. more and stay. And then we created the, the headshot crew. So guys, if you, can you go bring up my site again? I just want to show you this this portion. See this find a photographer? There are so many leads. There's a lead, mm -hmm. this is a lead generation tool. This is the only site I know of in the world that, mm -hmm. that gives you free jobs. So um, <laughs> basically photographers are getting, I don't know why it's doing that, but let me, so this, you can type in your city. We have 14,354 photographers in here. I mean, if I just type Oldsmar, we'll see what comes up. But um, these are my associate photographers. They've gone through a vetting process of uh, showing me their best shots and then making it through this process. So they'll always come up first. But any city in the world, we have really good SEO. Yeah. So people are getting jobs. That's, That's really cool. so cool. And I hear every day, I got this job. I got that job. Put in the chat if you got a job from Headshot Crew. Um, so you can sign up for free for this portion. So I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Just go to sign up. If you want to do the coaching, you can get the book deal. You, or you can sign up for a monthly deal. Mm -hmm. um, it, I'll give you guys a code if you want it for first-time signups. If you don't want the book... Um, because the book comes with three free months, but you can get a free month on Headshot Crew by using the code free month, no space. Okay, so cool. Try that out. Awesome. Get in there. Use the Find a Photographer link. Get some jobs. Let me know you got them. It's pretty cool. So here's a question from Cheeky Nando again. Uh, Cheeky's asking, uh, what would you consider the minimum setup to start with headshots? A so camera minimum. and a lens. All right. I started in my apartment we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the course, I, but we haven't officially named it yet, but I think it's going to be how to make it in the headshot world. Something yeah, like something that. Like so that. Something like that. I think that, that was that. a working, I, I, working I title. I like that title, though. Working anyway, title. we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But I started with natural light. So I built mm -hmm. my whole business around natural light. I, in the book, you can see I start out in the book shooting my daughters in natural light. Like if you can't produce beautiful imagery, maybe we can zoom in on this. Like this is all natural, this is just window light. Can we zoom in on this one? Is that possible? Um, but Maybe in a second. In a second, we'll <laughs> zoom in on it. But this is all natural window light right here. Like if you can't, where am I going? I'm going here. And there you yeah. go. There we go. I mean, this is, if you can't produce that, look how beautiful those are. I mean, I created those two, but with my <laughs> wife, my wife had a big part of that. But I mean, that's I natural that. light. That is natural light. Like, how mm -hmm. can you not? You guys can build a whole business around a window. We're going to show how to do it. Yeah, and that's yeah. one of the classes we're doing tomorrow yeah. is about that. You know, we were talking about locations. Where, and then you build from there, right? So you start. Yeah. So, the, yeah, so the answer to the question, it is really the foundation is a camera and a lens. And yeah. that's really it. That's all you need. Some Which technical actually, most of photography is 
that's the start of it. Yeah. You know, is I got to have a camera and a lens. Yeah. But beyond that, I mean, yes, what you're saying is the lighting, you're just, the light, sun, the sun is providing the lighting. Right. And that's where you're starting. Yeah. Every light that's made is to try and emulate that exactly. sucker. So why so. not just start with that? Um, and you can start cheap. And then, and then as uh, this is what I did, I started uh -huh. and I started with natural light. And then as I got jobs, I invested in my kit. So I built okay. the kit out over time and then you can get more sophisticated with it. And, and the thing is, is that you really, you can't get too attached to your work because as you get better, you got to toast the stuff that's not as good as the current stuff you're yep. doing. Another, I'm so tough feeling. on the photographers on the headshot crew because I'm like, you're better now. That stuff that you had before doesn't fly anymore. Yeah. And that's where you want to get to. Growth. Cool. Uh, well, so Mohammed's asking, what do you think about the new line of products from Canon, Canon the small SLRs like the M3, M5, and M6? I believe that's their mirrorless. Mirrorless, model. yeah. I have not, I only played with mm -hmm. one for like two seconds, so I don't really know. Um, so I can't speak for those, but mm -hmm. I mean, I think anything that Canon does has been amazing. So why wouldn't they produce a, a wonderful mirrorless that would compete with the other mirrorless cameras mm -hmm. out there? I mean, the, everybody's jumping in on this bandwagon, so why not Canon? There you go. So Johan's asking, uh, Peter, I'm still not very good at shooting portraits and I'm in the Netherlands. Can I join the headshot crew or do you have a, uh, to be at a certain level? No, anybody, any level. I, all my teaching is for any level. We, and the Headshot Crew is a worldwide network. Actually, with the guy who helps me run it is in the Netherlands. So um, Maurice Jager, you can look him up. Just email Maurice at headshotcrew.com and speak some Dutch to him and see what happens. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, so Preet's asking, Peter, are you wearing the... I'm I am. Sure. I bought this in Dubai. Sure Pre I was what? It's a Panerai. Panerai. Um, I was go. in Dubai, and I, it was my birthday, and I bought myself a watch, and Preet was, you know, I got so excited. I was telling him yeah. when, because I think I went to see it, and then I had to think a couple days, and then I ended up pulling the trigger. Yeah. Uh, so North of 49 is saying, come back to Halifax. So that was obviously, awesome. Yeah. yeah, that was um, Halifax was fun. And then Carl's asking, are you thinking of coming to Montreal? I think Montreal, I, I'm, I'm always... I'm trying to stay, if, I, if they're within a five or six hour drive of New York City, yeah. I'm like, they can come to me. Come on, okay. come to New York City. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's like DC people are like, when are you coming to DC? I'm like, get your butt on a train to New York. What's the big deal? You know? Well, this, so this is, a, this is a deep question here. It might be, a, I don't, I'm not sure how deep it'll get, but Shay's asking, what's the biggest mistake photographers make when starting a headshot business? That's a big one. Um, I think I think the biggest mistake that they make is that a lot of photographers um, don't take responsibility for directing their subject. Mm -hmm. So the person gets in front of the camera, they technically might be awesome. Like they mm -hmm. might light it well or they right. know their settings. They know what they're doing. They're not getting any motion. But out of the there's feet. nothing yeah. between them and the person. Yeah. And the person's left sitting there on their lonesome trying to do something. And the photographer doesn't know, doesn't, isn't aware that it's really about the direct. Like technically, yeah, you have to be technically sound, but you got to direct. That's what, that's what this book, this book really, and, and this isn't, it, it's, I always say, it doesn't matter if the person's three feet in front of you or 30 feet away. I'm directing the same way. And it's mm -hmm. all in here. This is only, called the headshot because it's my platform you know yeah. headshots are my thing but this is this could be titled directing human beings in front of cameras that's well, really I think what that it could was one be of the quotes that i remember from your one of your kelby one classes was it was like you know headshots like 10 percent technical 30 percent people directing yeah, well, I call or, no, 90 percent 90 percent therapist 10 percent photographer there you go therapist the, photographer so yeah technical. so 90 percent yeah. you're just doing Coaching people along, trying to get that emotion, that gesture, that that look, you know, the look that you end up with. Yeah. And the ten percent is like, oh, I actually need to know how to push the shutter and the f stops and all that. Yeah, you need the light. I mean, everything yeah. has to be right. Yeah. And then you go to work. But yeah. the minute that that person gets in front of your camera, if you're being tactical, you've lost them. Yeah. They don't have anything. They don't, you know. So that's really yep. it. That's really what it's about. Don's asking uh, when you do actors headshots. Is it uh, is the end product digital files for the client to post and print, or do you provide a physical print or both? I don't provide any physical prints. Actually, my uh, my sessions they get a proofing website. It's called Photoproof Pro. Is the one I, that I use. They go up there, and um, 
and all my clients, it's like a CRM for me. It's basically like yeah. all my clients since 2008 are in there and I've got their emails, their address and their pictures. So if somebody ever calls again, I just go right on there and I can find them and go in there. And then that's directly linked to my retoucher and printer. So they will go through that to get to them. And that's how they, that's how it all works out. There it is. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Photo Pro, Pro right there. There you go. Um, there is a crew perk section in the headshot crew for a discount on that sucker too, oh, cool. but I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head. Uh, so Graham's asking from the UK, I'm assuming, because it's Graham Burley from the UK. Um, yeah. uh, where do you um, market your headshots when you, you were starting out? So where did you market them? I was an actor and a model in New York City. I was good looking when I was younger. No. <laughs> So um, I was in, I just marketed to actors. It was, there's a very, it's a vibrant community of actors in New York. It's a big deal to get your headshots done. So I had, there, there were already, there was already a hierarchy of headshot photographers. It was a, like a big deal. These guys were charging right. at the time, like a thousand bucks a headshot. I was like, I got to get on that train. And um, I did everything I could to market towards those actors and then, and that's what happened. It was all that. So okay. in this day, it's different. There was no social media. There was anything like that. So it's a totally different ball game. You have all these different tools, and and obviously, it's it all boils down to marketing good work. Like I have photographers all the time ask me, like I'm doing all this, I'm spending all this money on on marketing and and all this time and everything, and I don't know why nothing's working. I was like, show me your work, and I was like, your work sucks. I'm like, I'll help you get your work yeah. better. Don't mark it till your work's up to yeah, par. Yeah, no, like your that. work is like, like yeah. don't, don't do that to yourselves. <laughs> get coached. You, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Uh, so building off of, this is kind of going back to building off that. Uh, Donna's asking a question, kind of builds off what we talked about before with the, the therapist. Um, can uh, Peter discuss a bit regarding the psychology part of how he gets his subjects to open up and relax? So Donna, that is you, the question. Yeah, that's so, the number one question. There it is. There Donna, it is. Donna, you laid it on us. Took a while. <laughs> it took so long. Um, how do you get your subject to relax? So the, I do the headshot intensified, which is the third day. Uh, I coach for two uh -huh. days, and then they, and on that day, the photographers photograph me. But okay. I use my acting chops, and I become a character. So okay. I'm like Joe the plumber, and then they Got have it. to photograph me, and I act like Joe the plumber. Every single photographer, almost until I yell at them and tell them not to ever do this, don't ever do this if you take the headshot intensified. Every single one tells me to relax. Do you think, have you ever been told to relax and you, by somebody and you just went, oh, thank you for telling me. I feel so much better now. Like, <laughs> you it know? Funny. So photographers say relax yeah. when they, because they don't know what to say to get to the person relaxed. The truth is, is the anxiety about being in front of the camera is what's got them tense, right. which is normal. Yeah, it's everybody so gets like that, right? Yeah. The answer is get their brain off the camera. How do you get their mm. brain off the camera? You have to develop a skill set that can draw attention away from them from the camera and the camera's really powerful so you have to be more powerful to than them in getting their attention off the camera so i do you have any techniques like any i have a lot yeah. so one of them is i'll help you with one can you guys bring up hurleyisms.com so i i used i figured out this skill set of confusing my subject and I realized it worked because if they're confused, humans like to be right more than they're concerned about cameras, I found. They really like to be right. So um, I am confusing them by giving them something ridiculously interesting to do. And I'll say a bunch of weird stuff to them. If you want, you can, you can click so, start yeah, Hurleyisms. So here, flip over to, uh, you can flip over to mine, Jason. So there you go. So just, this is free. These are my 50 one-liners, my favorites. Keep it on PG for this purpose. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, I got and a PG. Then, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then you can hit men, women, kids, couples, groups. And, and there's over a thousand lines in there. And it's growing because you can submit your lines. Um, some of the stuff works for groups. Some of it, does, you know, look delighted. What do they say? Pinkle your canuckus. You know, people want to be right. They want to pinkle their Canuckus. They don't know what pinkling or a Canuckus is. 
So you can use these if you if you want to try to say to your people, but you've got they've got to land. You can't just you know right. hope. You have to they have to resonate with you. But there's 50 of them in there for free if you if you spend I think it's 4.99 a month or you could do it for life um, if you spend more. But it gives you a thousand, and then you can pick out your favorites. You can have it running on a on an iPad or something but it will give you something to get their brain to stop thinking about the camera and think of, tilt your head towards the Statue of Liberty. Wait, Humans sure, want to so be right. Towards Fork Knox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you need to know, like, like yeah. they will want to get that right for you, which is really interesting. So I, I use that. I use a slew of different techniques now, but um, that came out and I started teaching it. And then uh, I developed the app. The app will give you like instant mojo is basically what the app does. So mm -hmm. you have to be willing to put it out there and see if it'll land. And if and if you fall flat, flat on your face, what do you what do you got to lose? The person's like, you're a little crazy, and just blame it on me. This is some crazy photographer who's got these crazy lines. It's not my fault. Blame <laughs> me. You blame me. I'm fine. Blame me. Go. Blame away. I'll do it. But, but the, it, it will does, get you some laughter. It, it will get you some life yeah it does sound like this is like a big thing you know like like this is the like if you really want to break through into headshots like you've got to get past that that psychology stuff the thing is is if the person so the person's tense in front of the camera yeah. right their face isn't going to move mm -hmm. right yeah so i don't everybody has to have their own own system and some photographers portrait photographers keep people serious the whole time which is fine i'm a commercial Headshot photographer. If people look serious, they look miserable. Right. So I always need a hint of a smile. The fact is, is if you can make somebody laugh, they're going to relax. What happens when we relax, when we laugh, when we crack up our whole body tenses, mm -hmm. when we come down off that laughter, it's the most relaxed moment that you'll have. So if you can create laughter, you're done. You've got it. You got the trick. Uh, the Hurleyisms create the laughter. And I'm not always going for the laughter, but I'm going because if they laugh, guess what? Their face changed. Mm -hmm. And it has to go back to rest. Yeah. So I get a range of expressions through that that work for me. Yeah. That And then they, they, we, you have to be more relaxed after cracking up because you just tensed your whole right. body by going into convulsions right. or something like that over some silly line that could be out there. Decrease the distance between your lower eyelids and your pupil. That's a squinch. I made that up. There you go. Yeah, the squinch. That was picked squinch up was all cool. over the place. Yeah. Yeah. It was big stuff, big stuff. So uh, Dave R is asking about uh, Westcott. So he's saying, Peter, has Westcott released more of your, your inventions yet? Oh, it's funny you should ask. Um, so Westcott and I have are continually brainstorming to come up mm -hmm. with stuff. Um, you might know my company, Hurley Pro, was the company that I started and, and I developed a, uh, some backgrounds and um, a weight bag that's a water ballast bag. And I decided that I'm a photographer and a coach, and it's very difficult to be in the product business. And why not team up with an amazing company right. that gets to make some products with me? I was working on a line of lights, and I just developed the Flex Kit with Westcott, which has been phenomenal. Uh, they're taking over the Pro Boards, which are coming out very soon. And we are announcing, I'm, I'm, at very soon, we are announcing the H2 Pro Bag, which is my water ballast bag that will be coming out um, I guess I'm not, he told me not to tell people when it's coming out, <laughs> but it's, it's sooner than you could possibly imagine. Like, and what does that do? Like, very what, soon. What is that, what is so, that bag used for? So the thing is, is that I, I have expensive gear. You know, my lights, mm -hmm. I don't want them falling over. So what do we have to put on the light stands? Usually a sandbag. Sandbags. Who wants to carry sandbags yeah. around? It's horrible. Yeah. Like I'm going in, I'm in New York City. I got to go into the elevator, downstairs, get my car, pull my car up. Hopefully I don't get a ticket and then lug sandbags over there. Mm -hmm. No way. And that's what I was doing. Yeah. And I was like, there's got to be a better solution. So I made these water ballast bags that now you get to the venue, you fill them up with water. You know, and, and then you're good when you get there, right. you know, and then hopefully you water some plants when you're done or something like go. that. So uh, Janie's asking, uh, what is your go-to lighting setup when you can't use the, your, uh, the flex kit? So when you can't use the flex kit, what do you use? Wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. I always use the flex kit because I have one. Um, but <laughs> when I can't, if I couldn't, um, I actually, and in the class we're going to be, I have Canon speed lights. I also am a pro photo shooter. So I have all, I have, uh, 
Profoto B1s with OCF 1x3s shaped in the basically in the same configuration as the as the flex kit and i put them in that configuration and i really like the b1s um but i also have canon speed lights and i put them in rapid boxes from westcott the one by three rapid box no 10 by 24 rapid boxes and they're awesome and there is a um there is a I'm reading what Brandon's writing. Yeah. So, so Brandon, Brandon's, on Brandon's the chat. from Westcott and yeah. he's on the chat and he told me not to say when the bags were coming out, but to follow them on social media and you'll know when they hit the market, which is going to be, what's today? It's going to be very soon. So very if you want to know, just go it's follow It's not going to be this month. Go I'll give you a hint. Go follow FJ Westcott <laughs> and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll yeah. know because Brandon will let you know. Yeah. So basically the, the rapid boxes with the speed lights coming through them is a great solution for being portable and travel. Or if you're already a, a pro photo shooter and you, and you use the B1s with the batteries and running around or the B2, I also like the B2s. Um, it's an awesome solution. And I use the pro photo stuff when I'm doing movement and high speed or I need to blow light further than what a flex kit the flex kit is great for the continuous light and to do about 99 percent of the stuff i do but for that those shoots where i'm having people jump around or i got to blow light across a room or i'm using my i i also like shooting my portraits with strobes i'm all pro photo well let me grab some other questions down here so um uh janie's asking what is your least favorite thing that you have uh see commonly in headshots so, least favorite thing in headshots. My least favorite thing. I can't stand this. She knows the answer. She's part of the crew. She knows. She's setting me up. She knows the okay. answer. Okay. I think. Now, uh, my least favorite thing. I've been working on it with the crew for, and I've been doing it over weeks. I do newsletters that go out. All, and the uh, last two weeks, I've yeah. talked about this. Maybe that's why she's coming up. My least favorite thing is when a headshot photographer shoots somebody from above them. <laughs> okay. Like if you put the camera up here and shoot down, it diminishes the person. Mm -hmm. If you put the camera below and shoot up, it empowers them and they look more mm -hmm. powerful. Now you don't want to shoot up their nostrils or anything, but you don't want to shoot them up their nose. But if you get, if you get lower, so if you look at my old work, mm -hmm. I, I hate looking at my old work. Right. I shot too high. Okay. I shot high. I hated it. Should I give an example of that? I shot high. Well, it's great I, when you, if you have an example, I that'd be great I to show. But I, I get what you're... You're saying so, just changing that perspective a little bit. My older work, changes, I should, this is all shot low. Changes a lot of the emotion in the shot. You know, so what you're saying is, if you get lower, you're gonna have that more in that empowerment or, or feeling you know more you know bold. Where if you get above, you're feeling almost diminished or demeaned. Yeah. Yeah. I you get can't. It. You just can't. You gotta. You gotta. Hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna find this. Anyway, yeah, so that's the thing. It's, it's empowering mm -hmm. to, shoot, to shoot the person dead on or, you know, a little bit. I actually, I actually, you guys, I'm not kidding. I aim the camera up. If you look at me now, I aim the camera up at these people. Hmm. Hold on, I'm going to find this shot because it's... Well, while you're looking for that, I think yeah. there was a question over there. Uh, Deb had uh, about certifications for Kelby One, and we are working on those. Um, I, we're almost, almost complete with it, but um, we just got to get it finalized and um, it will be out shortly, so. Um, All right, can you put up this, this uh, put up my screen? You, okay, so look at this picture. Like that mm -hmm. shot, like I look like I'm on a ladder, I think. I mean, I'm I like, get what you're way, saying, I yeah. can't stand that. And now look at you how can, blank she looks. Let's just talk expression. She looks miserable. You can definitely tell with the way their eyes are pointed. Like yeah, look at that. She's looking up towards your camera. She's yeah. looking way up, and she looks out to lunch. So what does she have to do? She has to squinch, and she has to do a slight smile. But I'm still up high on her. Look at this. Look at the difference. Mm -hmm. But I don't like that because I'm too high. Yeah. I just think it's ridiculous to be that high. Mm -hmm. Stop doing that, people. Lower your cameras. So that's a big thing for you. Is that, and that's even been a realization kind of recently then, seems like. Well, not yeah. like recently. But no, it's really been the past. Like I mean, it's just been an issue across the board of all uh -huh. photographers that are yeah. shooting this type of work yeah. because I can't stand it. Like in the eighties or somebody, somebody put somebody, sat somebody on like a wood floor and stood over them and shot down. And then it became like all the rage. Like and it's thing, just like yeah. this. It's like the person looking up with this. 
I just can't. No, I don't like that. So there you go. That's your pet yeah, I'm Adam. I mean, I'm very uh, animated is the yeah. word about that. Uh, uh, Dobo is asking, uh, do you use any lens filters? Uh, and then follow up, do you have any, Im do you have image stabilization, image stabilization on or off when you shoot on a tripod? Okay, so wait, what any was filters? The, no filters and, and image, image stabilization, stabilization off. So always um, off. I actually yeah. bought the, the, the Canon 70 to 200 without the stabilization because I don't, I don't, I don't ever use it in the studio. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I would use it if I was shooting, like, obviously if you need it, you use it. But in the studio, no, I don't. So image stabilization off. So Josh is asking a, a, another big one. Uh, Peter, what would you do differently if you were starting your business over? Oh, wow. So if you rewind back to when you started, what would you do well, differently? Well, I'm always a big believer that I wouldn't do anything differently because it would make give me a different trajectory than where I'm at. I'm mm -hmm. very thankful for where mm -hmm. I'm at and what I've got. I, I've got an amazing, I get emotional real easy. I better not talk about this. Um, what would I do differently, though? I, I, if I talk about the people and the crew and stuff, I just start losing it. But so maybe, I don't maybe know. What if the crew wasn't in the here? Question yeah. of, maybe the twist on the question could be, you know, not you, but if somebody else was starting out, what would you tell them to do differently than what I might have done? Than what okay. you have done. That's better. Um, what would I do differently then? I think it's a different time. I mean, I was shooting, mm -hmm. I, I was, I think the moves that I made when I started, one of them was I was a self taught shooter who learned how to work in a dark room and was processing all my own film mm -hmm. and, and printing all my own right. stuff. So I processed during the week and print, and I was getting chemical all over my hands and I was, I was mm -hmm. a mess. And I think um, everything was black and white back then. And I, when color started to come into the fray, I was one of the first ones to go digital. And I'm so glad I made that, that move. But I was scared because I bought a medium format digital back then. And I, if I had known I mean, it was way overpriced. It was a terrible thing to do. But if I had known, I would have done it sooner because it really changed the game and, and got me mm -hmm. that, that it was like I was the first one in doing so the highest you, you quality color. you were on the color. forefront yeah. of technology, but you wish you would have been more on the forefront is what you're saying. I would have even bought it sooner. Yeah, yeah, if I had known, I would have even... So, uh, I mean, maybe then, I mean, that's be advice because I'm a firm believer in this. Is like, you got to stay ahead of technology. Yeah. Like, you know, you got to kind of be pushing the limit. Like, don't be scared of new things that are coming out. So I, yeah. that's kind of what it sounds like you're saying is, hey, if there was a new format that came out or a new thing, like don't just go, I'm not gonna use that or sure. that's not photography. Yeah. Like maybe look into it, maybe yeah. embrace it. Yeah. yeah. If cost isn't an issue. I mean, cost was an issue for me. I mean, it was yeah. expensive, but it was yeah. worth it. Uh, it was totally Larry's worth asking, it. Uh, can you share your most recent celebrity shot? Do you have any celebrity shots? That oh you yeah, share? Um, I can, hold on a second. What is it? Uh, I'll show you. Let me see if it, it comes up. Uh, well, here, um, we're going to take a quick break, and when they come back, we'll show, your, uh, we'll show your shot. Okay, cool. All right? Cool. So we'll be back in just a few minutes uh, with Ask Me Anything with Peter Hurley. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. All right. Well, we're back um, for that shebang episode of the uh, the grid here, and um, so Peter Peter found a shot. So uh, um, we're going to show that over. Can you bring up uh, Peter's screen? And Peter can talk about this. So the question was, any of your recent celebrity shots? Yeah. So I just shot uh, Harry Connick Jr. and his wife Jill um, for Colaguard, which is, uh -huh. uh, and they're doing the new fifty, which is a a uh, test for colon cancer and uh mm -hmm. this is the this is the site so i don't know this is the main shot that i took if we hit learn more maybe you could see more but it was more like this this was the stuff that i did i shot this of him i shot okay. this of him cool. with the doctor i shot them together shot them doing all this stuff so it was this was it was funny this kept getting pushed back and pushed back and push back i was supposed to do it in january and they ended up doing it february 19th which was the night headshot mania started mm. and i didn't want and i the the director called me and i said i don't want to lose this job and i said i i 
I kind of pulled the people going to Headshot Mania. I was like, you guys, I'm a photographer first. I'm a coach second. I was like, Headshot Mania means a lot to me. If I miss the opening party and get in there for the keynote on Tuesday morning, would that be cool? And everybody's like, go take the job. Mm -hmm. So I went, I did the job. I shot all day like a maniac and I ran off the set at they they were wrapping Harry at 7 p.m. and they and I said and my flight was at um, like eight or something out of Newark, right. I, so I said I have a hard out at 6:45. So for the last 15 minutes, I had to get Dave Geff and my friend to come shoot for wow. 15 minutes to just do some group shots while I ran to the plane, and then I got to Morongo at like two in the morning, and the next morning I woke up and did the keynote. Awesome. So this came out and uh, and it was very stressful but it it was great and it was it was interesting really interesting working with those guys cool harry was harry was cool but it was tough it was a the the environment they were shooting a commercial for this so i was just doing the still yeah, so it was like i'm diving in they're while video. they're doing that it was very yeah. it was very challenging <laughs> so was our life right yeah no, that's yeah i know it is um uh johan's asking um how peter how are your photoshop skills already improved my Photoshop skills are horrible. <laughs> I, 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 I know how to resize an image, I think. I can crop. I know a place I can, can teach you. I could, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have time to learn. I have people. You can, you I can have learn. People. There's tons of classes. I, ha I, have, got, I have people. <laughs> I have people take care of that for me. There you go. Um, Kelly's asking, speaking of gear, uh, are you working with folding V-flats? Oh, wow. That's funny. Um, I hope Brandon's still in here. It is something that I've been, mm. I'm a big V-flat guy. I'm, I, I mm -hmm. think controlling spill and flare and doing like controlling light is key and having V-flats in your studio is a necessity, but I travel and I want V-flats with me all the time. So we're working on a solution for that. Yes, uh, I'm not sure on a timeline on Sounds that Sounds like at you all. should that's, follow F.J. Westcott. You should probably follow <laughs> fjwestcott.com. There you go. You know, go get their social, get, get going. Sean's asking, uh, uh, wh who was the most challenging client you've ever done headshot for? I don't know if you want to answer that. I had one yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so yesterday. That was um, the most challenging one. Well, no, it's like the ones, like the ones that stick out the most. Usually it's people, it's, it's just... Um, there is no, and I, I don't know. I, in 18 years, I think I, I'm try, always trying to figure out the number of people that I think I've shot like 30,000 people or wow. something at this rate, probably. Um, so you can't, you don't have that one mm -hmm. person that stands out. But the ones that are that are are, are difficult. Yesterday, I had, a, I had a, I had shot three people, and and um, it was an interesting day. It was very. Um, it's rewarding when you get the shot out of somebody that you're not sure how to go about doing it. Right. You've all had these people in front of your camera. You've been like, how am I going to get this person to look good? And when you do it, it feels, it's like, I'm sure. If you're a portrait photographer, you've had that. Um, and if it feels really good to be able to capture something. I really hit it out of the park yesterday. And it was, um, cool. I don't know how to explain the situation in detail but just the adverse situations that you go through are what will make you a better photographer so just mm -hmm. hopefully yeah. you're getting challenged by the people that you photograph and you can come through and um there's a thing that most photographers only feel as good as their last image that they photographed mm -hmm. i kind of feel that yeah. way yeah. i think we're tough I, on ourselves i have that problem yeah. yeah and i feel pretty damn good about the last image that i took yesterday that's awesome yeah cool uh so priest asking um about uh, your portfolio, uh, what uh, what's your opinion about the minimum number of images required for a headshot for photography portfolio? I think you want a portfolio that is, at, you know, you need at least 10 images and it should be 10 different people. You know, I think mm -hmm. 20 is great. If you can start off with 20 images and 20 different people, I make the, everybody on the headshot crew that wants to submit a portfolio to me they have to have 15 images to get become associate. You need 15 people. Different, different people, people. Good images. Yes. Yeah. And one bad shot will kill you, so you have to be picky. So it's more important. And it's not, this, this is the thing that is crazy. I have people say, well, we don't, we live in this ho-dunk area where everybody's unattractive. I was like, that's not true. Yeah. People are people. People are people, people. Get some people. That's it. And then uh, the best way to find uh, subjects to build your portfolio. 
at, at roaming the uh, surface of the planet Earth. There you go. There's a lot of them. <laughs> there's tons. There's you can like, discover I think them. There's billions of I them. I mean, they're they're, they're very <laughs> easy <sure>. to find. <laughs> they're not they're they're not hiding. You know, they're out there. There you, you go. You know, you just get people. You just need people. Start with friends and family and freebies and work with them. And then, and then if you're walking down the street and you see somebody interesting and you want to ask them if you can shoot them, they ask them if you can shoot them. What, what's the worst they're going to say? No, I try not to do that because, you know, it's a little weird. But, you know, if you need people for your portfolio, you go ask. You go get people. Once you get good and you get, you get your friends to recommend people, do a free headshot day or something to build your portfolio. That's what I did. I had to do 20 shots. And I, I, the, they said, hey, if you get 20 shots in this portfolio, we'll put it in here. And it was this reproductions place in New York. Mm -hmm. I said, all right. I called all my friends, everybody. I was like, I need 20 of you. And I shot it in like a week. And I, and I got the portfolio in there and I was off to the races. Cool. Right. Um, so a question from Alan. Um, to be approved for the headshot crew, uh, you have to pay? Yeah, it's a member okay. subscription site. It's pay to play. You come on, uh, we're running this thing. There Get you in go. there. Twenty bucks and you can. Pamela handle. is asking though, who's your favorite headshot crew member? Then she said, oh, "Have oh, I ever oh, shot on a kidding. chroma key?" Yeah, she's just kidding. I don't have a favorite. My favorite headshot crew member. You don't have to answer that one. Well, it probably would be Joe. Okay. Joe built it, so I wouldn't have it without Joe. <laughs> so that's definitely Joe a built the site. He's my favorite member. He's a member, I guess, even though he's the site. He built it. So the reason we have it is because of this guy Joe. He's my. There favorite. you go. So Joe. Joe. It's all due to Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's a random question up here. Have you ever taken a, a shot on a chroma key? No. 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 Not my thing. Yeah. All right. Well, we do have to wrap up. We have to do the contest, and we. Um, to enter the contest uh, for this week's show, you go to kelby1.com forward slash uh, contest. Uh, when you go there, yep, there it is. You just fill out your name, email, website, uh, and just in the comments, tell us uh, what you want to win. Tell us, you know, you want to win the Peter Early Headshot book. I'll sign it. Uh, Platypod Max, Platypod Ultra. Uh, Tell us that you're an actual human being there, and then hit some Roaming the surface of the planet Earth. Yeah, one of those billions yeah. of people that roam <laughs> the surface. And um, yeah, and then um, last but not least, um, here's a shot uh, I want to bring up. This is Juan's uh, Instagram. So Juan, I don't, you probably met Juan yeah, out Juan, on the shoots. Yeah. yeah, everybody knows Juan. So um, Juan's out, and they're actually shooting a class here. There's Juan and Steve. There's Steve. Um, yeah, so shooting out in Seattle, they're shooting a class with uh, Elena Blair. Um, they're shooting two classes out there. So um, they'll be coming out in a, a few uh, few months. So look for those on Kelby One. Um, but yeah, so so Peter, where can people go f besides the Headshot Crew? Because we know yeah, we talk they, about the Headshot well, Crew. Well, they got to go to my Instagram. Go? You got to okay. follow my Instagram, guys. Peter underscore Hurley. Oh, we can bring, can you that bring up. it up. Bring that up. Yeah. And guys, follow the stories. I have this thing that I do called oh, there's a modeling shot of when I was pregnant if you go a little lower. Oh. There we go. Yeah, there you go. You just gotta see that. There's some of my sailing. Peter underscore Hurley. And I do these things on my story where I do wake up and goals. So I wake up in the morning and I talk about goals that I'm setting for myself and goals that like ideas that you should maybe think about for yourself mm -hmm. yeah you do a lot of that the, kind the of stuff. instagram story stuff yeah. yeah yeah i like that stuff i haven't got into that yet i do have an instagram but i don't do much on it yeah so well i, I shouldn't say that i do stuff on there but not much that stuff um but yeah so go follow peter on instagram and yeah. um, go check out the headshot crew and check out your classes on kelby one Check out That's your it. book. Yeah, exactly. Right? And be, get ready for this new class that we're doing tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, new class. And then Photoshop World. And if Photoshop, you, yeah, Photoshop World. Photoshop I can't World. wait for that. I have so, not been to Orlando. I got, I got to so teach in what, Orlando. So what's your take? What's your favorite thing about Photoshop World? I got a question for you. What is it? I like the Krispy Kremes, which uh, by then maybe Madness. I get yeah, Midnight yeah. Madness and the Krispy Kremes. Are those yeah. happening? Oh, yeah. Those always oh, happen. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm so on a diet right happening. now for this racing, but by then I'll be I'll be ready for some Krispy Kremes, oh, yeah. I think. We've We've driven a long way to find Krispy Kreme one yeah. time. Yeah, okay. So there we definitely go. Happened. Well, there hey, guys, we um, thanks for joining us. And um, Scott will be back next week. Um, I'm not sure who the guest is, but there will be a guest here. And um, or is Scott oh. going to be here next week?
Scott, I think, is going to be here next week. If not, we'll... Uh, no, I, definitely. Can you show... Can we keep some of this footage? Because you got to see my... You should just do a montage of me on the grid each time. The last time I yeah. was here... I had a beard with a oh, shaved head, I think, right? you always got a I different think, right? haircut, a different <laughs> everything. Scott and I usually different. start off the grid talking about my hair goals. So this is for Scott because he's not here. Um, my hair goals are, usually I'm undecided, but I'm going to stay short. I like it short. There you go. I'm going to keep it short. It's better for the sailing. I think I look better with it short. Aerodynamic, so, yes, yeah. Yes. Aerodynamic, it works. There you go. Plus, it's not, it's not hanging that tough up top, so I don't know that I could grow along anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. So Rami's going to be on the show next week with Scott. So Rami uh, is actually been, he's a grid member or watches the grid a lot too, but he's going to be on the show next week. He's doing some landscape stuff. So um, for Kelby one. So, um, but yeah, guys, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next week for a Scott full episode of the grid. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Good stuff. Bye guys.